Hi, I'm Kato Vivili Monsen and I work for Fly Dressing. And now we're up in Northern Finland shooting a Fly TV episode. So today I'm going to show you in this Thai TV episode the three best flies from this trip. It's also three of my favorite patterns that works really good in every situation on both grayling and trout. So if you're getting started with nymph fishing, these three are a perfect start. The first one we're going to tie is the hair's air nymph with a little variation of it. This one here, it's a really popular trout fly, but it's been really effective on grayling also. It's always a good all-round fly and it can imitate every hatching insect. So let's get started. First of all, we need a hook. This hair's air I'm using as a point fly. It's the deepest fly in the water on my rig. So I'm using a wide gape jig hook from Partridge. It's got a nice deep bend and a wide gape. Here I have a size 14, but they're, quite, they're actually quite big in the size. So I use a one size smaller than usual now. We also need a slotted tungsten bead. I'm using the new one from Fly Dressing, the three and a half millimeter copper. Usually on my point fly, I always go with a three and a half normally. Sometimes if it's really low water, three or maybe two and a half, but my main millimeter is three and a half on the point fly. And the reason why we use slotted on jig hook is because it fits much better on the hook and it will actually make the jigging effect better on this fly. So if you see, a slotted fits perfectly in front of the eye and a jig hook has the eye up, not sideways. So it will go like this in the water. Now we can start tying. I'm using 80 Textreme brown thread, nothing special. I just like the brown thread because I'm putting on uh, hair's hair and it's quite light in the body. So I start with the brown thread so it looks better. First just attach the thread. Like this. Then we can start directly with the ribbing. I'm not using copper wire or anything like that. I'm actually using flu hot orange UTC thread as a ribbing. This is my hotspot for this fly and it's been really effective for me. So I just take off a piece. You don't need more than maybe 10 centimeter of piece but I'm taking quite long now just so I have more to work on so it's easier to pull it. So what I'm doing now I'm putting the end of the thread inside the bead and just tighten it up and then I work my way backwards and I go all the way down right before the bend. So when it comes to the bend you can just let this lay here because now we're going to put on the tail. And as a tail I'm using Coq de Leon. I always use Coq de Leon on my nymphs. I don't know why but, but it's really nice material. Here's a cochlear feather and we're going to use that one. Uh, usually on the cochlear feather you have a little more softer parts down and more stiffer parts up. So usually I prefer these parts down here. So I'm just going to take away the under wool first. The soft tackle here. Like this. So, on my point fly, which is normally a size 14 or 12, I usually go around 8 fibers. But it doesn't really matter that much. You can just see how, if it looks good or not. Here's a nice bunt of feathers. So, so the length of the tail, I usually say uh, half of the hook. That's my favorite. So it's not too long either. So I just measure shortly, like maybe here, and I go like this. Change position with the fingers, hold with your left hand, nip your thumb, and just tap. I went all the way forward with it, 
just to secure it more. And then I just cut off the remaining parts. So now I'm just going backwards again with the thread, all the way back to the tail. So I'm just stopping where I want it. So now I think the tails look good. Just some extra thread, just to secure it more. And now it's time for the dubbing. This is just normally hair hair dubbing in color natural brown or light brown. When I'm making a body on a nymph, I usually taper it from thin to thicker in the back to the forward. So I'm just going to put on some light material here, not too much, and that will make it thicker in front. So I just spin the dubbing on the thread, nothing complicated. And just make some turns, see how it gets. Take some more. I like it better to take it step by step now and don't take too much in the beginning because then it will only get a really fat fly and it doesn't look that pretty. So it takes a little longer time the way I do it, but I think it's worth it. So just a little more. And when we're just leaving a little gap between the dubbing and the slotted bead. Next step now, the ribbing. Usually I just make around four turns. Like this. And when I come all the way in front, just hold it tight and secure. So what I actually want to do now is a little bit risky, but usually it works. Um, I want to brush out a little of the hair's hair so the thread isn't that visible. So the hair's hair will cover a little bit more of the thread. So I don't want to clip the thread first because then I will destroy it. So I'll just hold it like this and brush a little easy. So when I'm brushing it out like this, we get a little more transparent mix so the dubbing covers the thread more but you can see it through anyway it looks really nice so when you've done that clip off the ribbing and now it's time for some cdc so i'm just doing a double dubbing loop around like this two times around and just secure it like this. So I use just this big old boy just to hold it. So now we need some CDC. I use this CDC here, dark gray, nothing special. It's good CDC, it's good quality, but I like the gray color on every nymph I tie. So this color is my favorite. So I'm just going to take out a bunch of CDC here and let's see if I can find a nice, nice length for me. I don't want the longest parts, but this looks actually good. I only use one side uh, when I tie a, a CDC on a nymph. I don't want too much CDC either. So I'm just going to use the lower side now. To tie on the CDC, I use the Petition magic tool. I have the smallest clip here, so I hold it like this.
put the tool on like this and I just clip it. So now I have the material in this clip here and I will attach it into the dubbing loop. Putting the thread over the clip, pushing it slowly against the CDC. And now I have a nice amount of CDC here, uh, but it's not stuck yet, so I need to spin it, the thread. So, like this. The thing I do now is just I make one turn first, so I get the CDC closer to the fly, and then I just a little spit and my finger. And just pull the CDC backwards. And if you think you have too much CDC now on the fly, you can just stop here and secure the thread. But I'm going to make one more turn like this. Go up here. And now I just hold this dubbing loop forward and secure with my thread. Clip the thread with the dubbing loop and then I just hold the CDC backwards and just secure with a little more thread like this. So now I can actually see that I have some longer fibers of CDC and some shorter because the CDC feather is not the same length all the way. So I'm just, I'm holding with my thumb and point finger. I'm just putting it backwards like this, taking my other finger and then I see the length there and I don't, I don't want the CDC feathers to be much longer than the fly. So I just nip some millimeters off like this. And the last thing, a thorax. Usually my favorite dubbing for thorax is uh, peacock dubbing. It doesn't matter which brand it is. But now I'm using this ice dub peacock from Hairline. It's more green than brown in it or black, but green is a really good color for trout also. So I'm using this one now. Take a little amount out. It doesn't have to be too much. So this thorax should just be right in front of the CDC, between the CDC and uh, the slotted bead. So I'm just making some turns like this. And the fly is done now. Uh, we just need to secure it with a whip finish and some UV glue. I prefer actually UV glue. So I'm just putting some UV glue on the thread here. Got my whip finish, my beautiful whip finish. Some turns. You can secure one more time. Like this. Cut off the thread. So now you can see the hotspot really, really good. So it's like a hidden hotspot. That's what I think is so nice with this fly. So here you have it, the Hairs Air Nymph, a good all round nymph that you can use almost everywhere, or you can use them everywhere. But I'm also going to show you uh, two other patterns that is actually quicker. Second fly is the orange tag. This was my top fly during this uh, shooting. The reason why it's so attractive and catches so many fish is probably just the hotspot, the orange butt section. Um, it works everywhere and even though this was my top fly, it catches so many fish. It probably catches twice the amount of uh, hair there and pheasant tail together actually. Just this place on grayling. It's really effective. It actually are many versions of this. You can call it orange tag, red tag and use different body material and thorax. But I'm just going to show you one simple orange tag pattern that I use. So for this, 
since it's my top fly I'm not going to use a jig because I don't need it then it will just cruise around quite high right under the surface so I'm using the Czech Nymph hook it's got a nice band so we need also a slotted tungsten bead for this one so I'm just going with a three millimeter gold like this and again just thread it on the hook thread it all the way to the eye and now you're ready to start tying on it Text stream 80 so just secure the thread second step ribbing and now I'm using copper wire it's from Wopsy UTC uh, it's a small so it's really thin this is the mainly the wire I'm using on my nymphs when I'm not using thread so I'm just pulling off a part probably around six seven centimeter just to have some extra to work on putting it inside the eye and securing all the way back and now comes the tag part and I'm actually using this again flu hot orange thread a little more fluorescent than a normal orange tag and I like this version of it so I'm just folding the thread like so it's thicker like this and now it's four times the thread here so I'm just pinching it down like this and securing from the end of the hook and forward towards the bead so when I'm done with that I can just go backwards again all the way back where I want to the fly to end see like this maybe so now I'm just clipping off the tail I don't want too long tail just a small bit some millimeters like this just going forward again with the thread just securing some more orange threader so you don't see it so much through and now it's time for the pico curl I use it a lot on nymphs so I'm going to tie with this no one now so what I'm doing on such a small fly I'm just put, taking one hole and just pulling it double like this on the hook securing and to make the hole stronger and more durable I'm actually twinning it around my thread so I'm doing like this just a couple of times and I winding the hole forward together with the thread so I'm just doing like this so I'm stopping here leave a little gap between the hole and the eye now I just need to secure the hole some turns around that's good now you take the ribbing I'm actually doing that the opposite way of the ribbing the hole just to secure it even more so now I have three turns almost the same gap between the ribs and four turns and secure like this and I use a, a wire scissor also a one that I've destroyed a little so then I can just clip it next step again CDC make a dubbing loop around and secure just the same procedure again 
uh, try to find a nice feather, not too long, and find the right amount of CDC. Uh, this fly is actually smaller than the last one I'm tied. This is my top fly, so I'm going to use a smaller CDC feather and a smaller amount also. So I can just tear off a little on this, this side actually, so it's not too much. So I'm starting with the shorter fibers up and finishing with the longer, so maybe like this. Secure the CDC in the dubbing loop. Spin. One turn to get the CDC closer. So spit on your fingers and pull it backwards. Then secure the thread. I'm also doing the same thing here with as with the hair hair. I'm just measuring how long the CDC fibers are and I don't want it much longer than the hook. So I just point find the length of the CDC here, hold it. And just tear off. We're going with the same again, the eye stubbing, peacock. Don't make it too complicated. Just stick to one or two dubbings. Keep it simple. Because it's it's not difficult to, to tie a uh, effective and fish finding nymph. It's it's really easy. You don't have to make it difficult. So just some small Parts of dubbing hair from the peacock between the CDC and the head, like this. Maybe a little much, but probably will catch fish anyway. I can just take just a little sap on it just to secure it. Now this is finished and I can show you with the UV light just to see how fluorescent the tail is. As you can see it really glows. So it's a thread I really like. Especially on new places where it's not high fishing pressure. Uh, if it's high fishing pressure and fish is getting slow, uh, I usually cut down on the, on the glowing or fluorescent parts. So that was the second fly. Not so pretty, but catches a lot of fish. So the third and last fly is this one, the fasten tail. It can be tied in many different ways, but I'm just going to tie it the easy way. I'm going to tie with a cochlear tail, fastened ribbing, copper wire and some peacock dubbing and a fluo orange hotspot with a copper bead head. So this is mainly my, uh, my point fly together with the hair hair. Same procedure here using the jig hook since it's my point fly and it will go all the way down to the bottom. So I prefer a jig fly so it doesn't get stuck so much in the bottom and doesn't get so much weed and grass on it. When it comes to the, to the bead head on this fly, it's no right answer. You can use pink, green, silver, copper, black, gold, whatever bead you want. I'm just going with something simple now as a copper bead head because the copper bead uh, probably always works but the reason why I'm using it mostly of the time is because if the fish is a little spooky it's better to go with copper than gold because gold, uh, gold is uh, actually shining more in the water copper is more neutral copper and nickel is really good when it's a shy fish now I took the three and a half millimeter also the new one from fly dressing now I'm ready to tie Going with the brown thread, secure. We need some ribbing 
and I'm going with uh, you probably can see it's so empty I've used so much of this it's the ultra wire UTC copper it's a small size so it's very thin it's just to secure the fly even more it doesn't add so much weight on it but with just this ribbing it, you can catch many more fish on the same fly if you see like this fly here the orange tag that I fished with uh, this um, fly TV I've caught probably over 100 fish on it and it still looks the same same procedure again put the wire in the head go backwards and again we're going with the cochlear tail I have a nice amount of tail here the amount of fibers it usually is sizes from sizes so I can just hold it like this and say okay that looks nice or that looks a bit little bit too much so I actually think it was a little bit too much now so I'm just trying again yeah and same with the, as with the, the hairs there around half the body length of the hook so around there then I just sw switch fingers since I'm a righty so I put my my fingers on my left hand to hold it and secure between my thumb go forward and cut off the remaining pieces here now we go backwards again go all the way back where you want to stop so I probably would like to stop around here so the tails are laying nice now right before the bend so that's okay by me now and I'm going like forward to half of the hook because now I'm going to attach the, the pheasant so here I have just a regular pheasant from uh, Vineyard I use two fibers, fibers on size uh, 12, 14 and 16, one fiber on size 18 and 20 and three fibers on size 10. That's just uh, my opinion what's the nicest, what looks best. Since we're tying now on a, a size 14 hook I'm just using two fibers because in my opinion then it's perfect with the thickness and everything. So I just have two fibers here. This is something I just learned for myself, but I don't know if it's the right way or the wrong way. But I'm actually attaching the pheasant in the middle of the hook with the thin part because actually I want it's getting thicker and thicker all the way back to the root. So I want it tapered all the way in front. So I'm just tying it from halfway and in. And when I come back here now, the thing I want to do to secure this pheasant also, I'm just giving it some spins with my fingers, not too much because then it will break. So I'm just spinning it a little like this. And then, I, then I'm taking it around the thread again. So maybe three times and then just lay it next to the thread. So I'm actually tying the pheasants together with the thread forward now and every turn I'm making I leave just a little gap not much Let's see so when I come forward just secure I don't know how it looks from your side, but probably not as good as my side. When I attach the pheasant fibers, I actually uh, pull them from me around like this. 
So I'm just going to secure the ribbing, the copper wire, uh, the opposite way. So it will hold extra. Just four to five turns as usual. Four and five. The last one just take a whole round, uh, just around and then I just secure it. It won't show anyway because I'm having dubbing and flurs and thread over it so then I just cut off the wire again with my scissor probably people hate that uh, you can tie this also with CDC but I'm um, usually I fish it without CDC this this type um, on nymphing I don't use a lot of CDC on the pheasant tail but if I do like uh, swing fishing which stream like streamer fishing in rivers with sinking line i can fish uh, pheasant tails with a lot of cdc in it and swing it around but for normal nymph fishing i'm going with this easy version without cdc so first off peacock dubbing So like I told you, uh, green is actually really attractive for the trout. This color has helped me a lot in many competitions. Putting on some dubbing. Maybe I can take a little more. Like this. Now just take a whip finish with the brown thread. And then our hot spot, the flu orange thread. So I'm just making like two or three turns just to see it's stuck now. I don't want too much either. Cut it off and actually we will do some UV on this one. The reason why I use the hotspot is because it separates itself out from all of the other insects floating in the water. So it's just something extra just to catch more fish. And like I said earlier, uh, the only time I don't use hotspot is just when it's really slow fishing. Uh, like in competition, we fish for on the same place for many, many hours. So let's say after eight hours in the same place, maybe you want to cut down on the, the hotspots because the people in front of you that have fished there for eight hours, they probably have used it. So then it's probably wise to choose um, a bead that is not so bright and also no hotspots. I'm just going to do the whip finish like this. I just quick flash with the UV light. You can see the hot spot here also. So guys, my third and final fly. There's many ways to tie a different colors, shapes, sizes of a nymph, and you can like imitate the insect really, really good. But usually you don't have to do it. You can do it the easy way like this, and you will catch a lot of fish. So this is my three all-round nymphs that I always have in the box and always catches fish for me. I would love to hear your favorite flies in the comments. And we will also give away these three flies. So leave a comment about why you want those flies and what you're going to fish with it. And we will pick one of you. So if you like fly tying, make sure to follow Fly Dressing on Instagram. And if you want to see those three flies in action, check out the Fly TV Nymphomaniac episode that we filmed up here. That was all for now. Thanks for watching and tight lines.